So, this is what our boss's office looks like. Yeah, it kinda sucks. You far! Yes, you! You guys! You spit it out, man! I just want to tell you that you guys are definitely coming in to work on Christmas! Why? That's like the one day I want to have off. Well, screw you guys! Now scram! Now! Go! Well, um, I still want you to have this. What is it? It's a present, stupid. I'm heading out of this office now since I can't stand this place. Wait, guys! What is it? On second thought, here's all four of your paychecks for the next two weeks. Think of it as my Christmas gift to you guys. Man, no one's ever done this to me before. Merry Christmas, guys! Gosh, kid, that worked. I guess so. Merry COBOL! For the third time. Yes, I know, even though I put in the description of my channel that I make videos about old programming languages sometimes, it seems that I only make videos about one particular old programming language at one very specific time of year. But anyway, brain f is fun, and COBOL is the worst thing to happen since ranch dressing Pop-Tarts! And now you're going to be having nightmares about those. Like I have had for the past four months. EVERYONE MUST SUFFER! But anyway, wouldn't it be fun if you could write brain f code and then compile it to COBOL? No, that's a terrible idea. Well, Carl, you're not going to ruin Christmas with your opinions, I'm doing it anyway. In this video, I will be writing a brain f compiler in COBOL that compiles to COBOL. COBOL, if you don't know, is an old programming language that was designed in the 1950s for business people. Since it was designed for business, they just tried to make it feel like you were writing in English, complete with concepts like nouns, verbs, and sentences. And they failed spectacularly. Brainfuck, meanwhile, was designed with the exact opposite goal. And that's why it's called Brainfuck. Unlike COBOL, Brainfuck actually succeeds in what it was trying to do. It only has eight basic instructions, and because of that, it's relatively easy to compile it to other languages. Not only that, but brain f compilers are some of the smallest compilers that are able to be made. So, without further ado, let's move over to the brain f compiler that I wrote in COBOL! And yes, it was hell! So, first things first, the variables, or as COBOL calls them for no real reason, the data items, are defined at the top of the program. It's not like you have a choice though, since COBOL really likes forcing structure, and requires that all data be declared at the top of the program with no exceptions. In the file section, a file is defined at bfcode.b. This is, predictably, where it's loading our brain f code from. In the working storage section, the actual variables are defined. There is a string for the code itself, an integer for the code pointer's location, and three variables that exist to be used later because COBOL is stupid. Moving on, the procedure division is where all the action happens. The file's contents are first loaded into the BF code data item. This is done using a perform loop, which is like a while loop, but with a worse name because it is COBOL. Up next is the first part of actually compiling the program, the header. This is basically 10 lines that contain the COBOL structure and data items that BrainF*** uses. It's what you would get if you compiled this BrainF*** code. There's no code there. Exactly, but if you were to compile this brain f code to COBOL, it would still end up having these 10 lines. So, hooray for that. Did I mention that COBOL likes to be long and drawn out? So now, the bare minimum COBOL code has been printed to the console. And yes, this program is directly printing the code to the console because that's the simplest way of getting it. Up next, the code pointer, inserts, and period data items are given their default values. That doesn't look right. Why is code pointer starting at 1? Shouldn't it be zero? Creaturey, you seem to have forgotten that this is COBOL, which does not follow the same basic design choices as other programming languages. This means that COBOL starts arrays and strings at one instead of zero. What? That's stupid! Yes, it is. But anyway, instead of the generated COBOL code, an array, or table as it's called in COBOL, is defined to represent brain f storage. PTR is defined as an integer, and it represents brain f memory pointer. INP is declared as a one character long string, and it represents the input the user typed. Fortunately, the rest of the program is straightforward for the most part. The program needs to go all through the characters in your code until it comes to a slash. For this compiler, you need to add a slash to the end of your brain f code to let the compiler know that the code is over. Now the program looks at the inputted code and outputs the COBOL that corresponds to each character. 
The plus symbol, for example, translates to this COBOL, which adds one to the location of PTR in VF Array. The minus symbol predictably just subtracts from that. Up next are the left and right arrows. Right adds one to PTR, and left subtracts one from PTR. This has the effect of moving the pointer left and right on our data array. The next two commands to add are the loop brackets. In brain f code inside of loops gets run over and over again until the value under the pointer is a zero. In COBOL, this can be done using a perform loop. And this is one of those times when COBOL code is actually easy to read and not overly long. The closing bracket just ends the perform loop. Lastly are the output and input commands. In COBOL, you can convert an ASCII character to the corresponding integer using the ORD function, which is used when accepting input from a user. You can convert an integer back into its ASCII character using the CAR function, which is used when printing a cell's value to the screen. So, what's the catch? I know better than to believe that it's easy to do this in COBOL, since you needed to dig quite far through Google searches to actually find these commands. And you're correct, there is a catch. For some reason, COBOL shifts all ASCII values up by 1, so while A typically has the ASCII code of 65, in COBOL it has the ASCII code of 66. So if we are trying to print a cell that currently has a 65 in it, we need to add 1 to make it 66, print it, and then subtract it back to 65 to leave it the way it was. This will cause the program to print an A, and the reason why COBOL's ASCII values are shifted like this is... Wait for it! starts arrays at 1 and not 0! Why do they do this? It's pointless! But anyway, after going through every brain f command in the source file and converting it to COBOL, the stop, run, and end program commands are added to the outputted COBOL, finalizing the compiled code. So, does this work now? Of course not! Have you noticed that COBOL sometimes ends lines with periods, but sometimes doesn't? Well, lines in COBOL end with periods when outside of any block statements, and they don't end with periods when inside of block statements. And perform, which is used in this compiler, is a block statement. So the data item inserts stores how many blocks the program is inside of right now. If it's a zero, a period will be placed into the string data item called period. Otherwise, there will be no period in that data item. After every single command, the value in period is printed after the command. So if inserts is set to zero, a period is printed after each line. Inserts is incremented when the perform loop begins, and it is decremented when the perform loop ends. Directly after inserts is changed, period is updated to the correct value. The effect of this is the outputted code following COBOL's period rules. Hooray for that. So, does this work now? Yes! Finally. Great! Now let's compile some programs! So, first things first, here's the Hello World program compiled from brain f to COBOL. If this ended up being the longest Hello World program ever created, I would not be surprised. Please don't take that as a challenge. Next up is the Truth Machine. I guess this is another way to write it than I did in my first COBOL video. And yes, when we put it through tio.run, it works. So, can you make it print something a bit more, uh, festive? You mean like a generated Christmas message? Okay, here's a generated Christmas message. Nice! Anyway, there was one program that I could not get to work. The short Hello World program. This Hello World is shorter than the normal one, but it uses more loops. And COBOL is slow, meaning that this program is even slower than it would be in interpreted brain f so it never finishes, and TIO just gets fed up with it. But anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. That's a lame way to end this video. Carl, what did I say about ruining Christmas with your opinions? Well, Carl, how would you end the video? I'd probably fake technical difficulties. Yeah. Well, guess what, Carl? That's a lame way to end a video. Well, Creature, all I'm gonna say is don't expect to get anything nice in your stocking for showing up in a video with the queen mother of dirty words, the F dash 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 word, in the title. Well, everyone, thanks for watching me write in Boomer Code. Okay, Boomer! And have a merry Cobol. But seriously, if Cobol was a real person, it would be a Boomer. <laughs>